This week we're going to get started using Angular and Angular is a JavaScript framework. And so we're just going to dive in and see a little bit. Let's break Angular down a little bit so we'll have a better understanding. First of all, when we talk about Angular, I want us to get comfortable with this word components because Angular is made up of components. And so I tried to give you a visual here of what components are and how our application is going to be set up. So we're looking at the home page of a website called TypeScript, and we're going to be using TypeScript also in our Angular project. So if you want to go look at the website, I, this is a great, hey, you should go look at the TypeScript website. But TypeScript, therefore, is a uh, also it's a, a subset of JavaScript, but it's a beefed up version of TypeScript, so it's a lot more of a JavaScript, so it's a lot more powerful. So we'll be us utilizing TypeScript in our application. That's a side note. But if we look at a web page, where before we always have been looking at a web page as an entire piece, now we're going to start looking at it and break it down kind of in sections, sort of like what we did when we create a footer tag. The footer tag is a snippet or a component of that web page. Um, if you think of a navigation, that is a component, and it's a reusable component. So if we could somehow create this navigation, so that we can, instead of on all of our pages, have to rewrite nav, ul, li, and ahref, and all of that, if we could somehow store that as a template or a component someplace else that we could plop into all of our pages, wouldn't that be handy? So that's, in fact, what we're going to be doing with Angular when we're talking about components. We're going to be breaking up our web pages into components and then utilizing those components to build our web page. For example, a component here might be this TypeScript menu, I mean this, this entire navigation menu. Notice that these cards, if you will, are repetitive and in fact if you look up bootstrap cards, they actually are in a section called components. So these are components that repeat themselves, but the data inside of those components change. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. So the anatomy of an Angular application is just that. An application is made up of components, reusable snippets or templates of code, and then there's services that run across all of the components, and we'll look at that a little bit later. But for right now, what I want is to get this idea of that we're breaking our web pages into components now, and we're going to see that in a little bit more in detail in code. So what makes up a component? So a component is made up of, first of all, a template. And the template is pretty straightforward. That's the HTML that you've been creating. So for example, like I just described, that whole nav section with the nav and the UL and, and the LI and your ahref, that could be a component. And I think you can see you have enough HTML experience at this point to kind of see that in your head as a uh, snippet of code that returns a single element, a single nav element with all of its children. So a component, therefore, is made up of a template, which is our HTML. Then it includes things called bindings, and we'll see what this means very shortly. But if you remember from this slide backwards, I said these components are all the same, if you will, but the only thing that's changing is the data that's inside of it. So each of these things, the data inside is the same, but you can probably think in your head that the HTML to create all of that is probably the same HTML tags. So that is called binding. So binding data, different pieces of data to our templates. And directives, we'll see very soon, is a fancy word for, um, back to this example, if you can think of um, this component. So when, in Bootstrap, this is called a card. So uh, wouldn't it be nice, instead of saying type, uh, excuse me, class equals card, how about if we just comp create a component. So instead of something like an HTML element that says footer, wouldn't it be nice if we could create one of these with just an a, a, a HTML element that's called card rather than having to make it class equals card like in a bootstrap scenario. So a directive therefore is a user defined HTML element. So instead of typing the word footer, we might type a, something that's more meaningful like navigation bar. I mean, nav is nav, and, and that's probably what you would use more of, but you'll, you'll see very soon. So a directive is a user-defined uh, HTML element. All right, so that's the template. It's what the user sees and then the data that we put into it. So it's also made up of a class, and a class, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, it's the same thing. A class for this template, for this 
uh, block of code, this single task block of code, uh, is made up of properties. Like, for example, if we were thinking of a button, can you see a button as a single component? That button might have a property, and the property would be what displays on the button, like click here or um, submit, for example. A class is also made up of methods, which is something like uh, on the event click, go do something, and you could set up some statements for that button to you know, fire off some things to do. So every template, therefore, has an associated class, and that class has properties, like what do I, what's the title on the button, and methods, click events, those kinds of things. Um, this is created, we'll be using TypeScript, and data and logic, so we just talked about that. So the third piece of a component is the metadata, and all metadata is is some extra information that we're gonna give to Angular to explain that this template is associated with this class, and that this whole piece is what we're gonna define as the component. So this is information for Angular to define and help us put these this component together with the template and the class, and make it a component and that kind of thing. So we'll see how that works. And we define it with something that's called a decorator. Well, that's a pretty word. So a decorator is this at symbol right here. So I'm just going to reference that and then I'll get I'll draw back on this um, so this slide. So there's the decorator. So let me step back a little bit. What does a component look like? So when we're writing Angular, and I don't expect you to know all of this quite yet, but we're this is what we're going to be building. And so what you're looking at here First of all, you're going to see that the class has been created. So we created something called class. And this particular class has a title. And it's called Acme Product. So this is a string. So the, the title for, um, uh, for the template, and I'll, that's right here. So I'll kind of elaborate on this in a moment. Also notice that there's a colon string. Well, JavaScript, as you know, is not um, strong. Uh, strong uh, data typed, we can make it be whatever we want. So one of the aspects of um, type, TypeScript, got all these words, right, is that we're going to be able to uh, make our variables uh, strong typed. So that's what we're doing here. So I can't put the number 12 in here, I have to put a variable. So then, let's see, so this is our class and it's called app component. This is our let me put the little thingy there. There we go. Here is our metadata and our template. So remember, the template is part of our view. So in our slide prior, I said that, let me go back one. I said we had a template and there was the view layout. So that's all of our HTML. So here's your template. Go back through here. Here's the template. So we're creating this snippet of code. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I can go back. I lost the whole thing. Let me see what I can do here. Um, La 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 la, just wait for a moment so I can figure this out. It's coming. All right, well, we're here. Um, okay. Let's just switch this over. There we go. Okay. So, sorry about that. That probably was a little distracting. So we're on a class, and then we were talking about our template. And if you look at um, our page title here, remember we talked about data binding. The page title is what's displaying here in this template. So in our template, we put these curly braces and we put the name of our property, which is page title. And that data is gonna go here in our H1 tag. And we've created this block, this component that's a div and in the div is an H1 and this word that says first, my first component. Well, I appreciate this isn't as um, reusable perhaps as the nav is, but at least it's giving us some, some uh, concept. So this is, the com this is the template and this is called the metadata. Remember the metadata is information to Angular telling us or helping us create this component, telling Angular about the component. And what we're doing here is we're using what's called a decorator and we're saying this particular function is an object and it's what we're going to be doing. We're creating a component. So we're creating a component and here is that directive, that selector, meaning that 
I'm going to be able to create an HTML element called pm-root that will then put in my template in that location. And I'll show you this in code in a moment, but let's just, I'm just trying to give you an overall view. So the last part of this is the import statement. And the import statement is just giving us the ability, just like anything else we've done, if you have C-sharp or, or Java, and that is that in order to create this component decorator, I need to pull in from the Angular core files the component library so that I can therefore create the component. So in this metadata, I'm telling Angular that I'm creating a component. In order to utilize it, I can use this directive or a uh, user-defined HTML element called PM root. And here's the template you're going to put in anytime you see an element named PM root. And then we can put our properties and, and methods in here. So I appreciate right now that's a little overwhelming. So let's look at it in code and see how that all works together.